Thank you, doctor. The first question that uh, we'd like to ask is to go back to those uh, sour lemon candies. Um, it, we hear controversies over whether or not they should be used because um, some of the people in the dental community will say it's really, really damaging to the teeth and the mouth tissues and that it's more important to just salivate, make saliva. Uh, is it necessary to use the sour candy or can you use just about anything? Uh, very good question. The key, as the dental uh, group that you refer to as proposing, is you got to salivate. So whatever makes you salivate, and that's many things. So that's chewing gum, that's lemon candies. Now, sometimes lemon candies can, you know, really cause some sores if you eat a lot of lemon. Um, so chewing gum, candy, food, dinner, uh, anything that makes you salivate. And number two is you can't stop when you go to bed. Now in our institution, Dr. Silverstein's institution, uh, and let me back up and I'm gonna reemphasize what I mentioned in my presentation. There is very good evidence. Sometimes it's bad evidence, sometimes it's moderate. There's excellent good evidence in the literature that when you take a salivary stimulant, you will, within the next 20 minutes, salivate and get as much as 40% of the iodine that's in your salivary gland out. So again, that comes back to your original question. It doesn't have to be lemon candies. It's anything that makes you salivate. In fact, as I'm talking right now, I start to salivate as I think about salivation. Um, now, the other point besides using anything that makes you salivate, is that you got to do it continuously during the first night. Now, Dr. Silverstein suggests that you do it multiple next days and multiple nights, and that probably helps too, but we don't have hard evidence that if you are taking constant salivary stimulants on day three and four, that that makes a difference. Um, now, in Dr. Silverstein's study from Cincinnati, Ohio, excellent study, he had a very, very low rate of salivary inflammation or dry mouth. Yes, it's critical that I-131 get out of the salivary gland because you don't want it to cause dental problems and you don't want to get dry mouth, but you can do something about that by continuously taking anything that makes you salivary. Good question. And when do you start? Do you start right away or do you start day one, like the, like 24 we, hours later? We start two hours after the I-131 is administered because, <clears throat> so you take the I-131, there's a little time for the GI tract to uh, um, absorb it, get into the blood and go to the salivary glands. Now we don't have hard evidence that two is a magical number or one is a magical number, or three is a magical number. We empirically are saying that two seems reasonable. Um, and then we start that. And it's continuous. Have chewing gum in your mouth. Uh, have something in you, a sour ball, a lemon. Um, this is the one time eating chocolate might be good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you like anything that makes you salivate. But do it continuously until you go to bed. And then in our facility, we actually wake the patient every hour. Because in our studies, we watched how fast, so we'd see the activity in the salivary glands. We measured that in 23 individuals. We measured that and it went down in 20 to 30 minutes after you took the salivary stimulant. But it immediately starts to reaccumulate. And when it reaccumulates, it re reaccumulates in about 40 minutes. So you want to, you can't take it all the time, but we recommend it. And if you can, that's great because what happened, and we did this in several patients, is instead of the, the um, so the iodine would come down, start to reaccumulate before it got back up, it would drop again and it stayed down very low. So I'm not sure I articulated that well enough but we start two hours after the therapy and we do it continuously 
through the day, and then at night, every hour, uh, after they, we wake them up, give them a salivary stimulant, and they are accumulating back up. If you could do it every half hour, that's tough because you got to get some sleep. But you got a cat nap, and we we wake at one hour. We do that to the next morning, and then throughout the next day, we have that patient take salivary stimulants. Now, to wrap up th this particular question uh, regarding the the pattern, what salivary stimulants does, Dr. Nakata, who wrote the first article, actually published the second article that confirmed the pharmacokinetics of salivary stimulants. So I thought that was very honest on his part. One will still hear, and I'm very, very strong on this because the evidence is strong, very, very strong that salivary continuous sialagogs is very, very important. And anecdotally, and in our studies as well, we've treated patients with 400 millicuries and no salivary problems. 